Thank you. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 11:29. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. John 6:37. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the way. Sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought away The precious blood of Jesus Christ Leave behind your regrets Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and dream and for joy. From the ashes of new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to.
pray with me? Jesus, we've gathered this morning to be in your presence with your people. We've come to the altar, believing that your arms are opened wide. We're thankful for the grace and the mercy that you extend to us because we recognize that we need it. Thank you for the work on the cross, Jesus. Thank you for life that is found through that work. We worship you this morning, and it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat. You know, as I was um, standing here this morning in worship, I was, uh, just to be honest, was distracted by a number of things that are going on with technology um, and uh, I was just reflecting on the Ecclesiastes 5 message I preached back in July that, where Solomon warned us that when you come to the place of worship, right, to not be distracted by a whole bunch of things, but in fact, we come to worship, and we come to worship to worship with God and how easy it can be to be distracted and to miss the fact that God is present. And that's why we're here, right? And so that's why we're here. And as I was thinking about that, I was also thinking about the young men and young women who are leading us amidst all of that stress and pressure, and none of us are even aware of that, and yet they're doing a phenomenal job. And so uh, thanks to our team who is working, and they work hard all of the time every Sunday, and most of the time we don't even know it. Um, so thank you guys for doing that. And for those of you who um, have been wondering what's going on with live stream, we have been working each week. We know we've had issues each week, and during the week, our team has been working on that. And I think we're live now, and I hope we're live now. And if not, um, you know, during the week, you, everybody who, who, does, who has tried the online experience, you know, you can always go to the church website, click on the YouTube resources, and you can uh, view the service from uh, the prior Sunday and, and all services in the past. So, all right, that's out of the way. But again, it's just a huge thanks for our team. Uh, you guys do an amazing job. Uh, so for those of you who are fairly new to Hope, a uh, couple things, just really quick. Uh, first thing, uh, just want to direct you to our church website. And when you go there, to sign up for uh, the e-newsletter, that's just a, a, a great place to find out what's going on in the life of a church. You, you can sign up you can get communicated with throughout the week things that are going on when you work your way to the end of the newsletter the last thing that you'll find is uh, an opportunity to sign up for the church app and if you're interested in doing that right now feel free to pull your phone and go ahead and do that Uh, one of the things that the app provides you is the opportunity to communicate like right now if you want uh, to the uh, you can click on the sign up uh, the events tab uh, just sign up for things Uh, you can go to the connection card there 
if, if you're fairly new and you're interested in knowing more about the church or you, you, you have a, a something you'd like to communicate, you can use that card to do that. Uh, for those of you who are live in the building right now, the connection card is attached to the back of the bulletin. Uh, you can use that as well. Um, so next Sunday, we've said this the last two weeks, next Sunday, there won't be anybody here in this building. There won't be anybody here. So if you show up here next Sunday um, and you're wondering where everybody is, just go out to 520 Castle Road, because that's where we'll be. But if you show up at 9 o'clock, there'll just be a few people at 520 Castle Road. It'll be those, you know, the team getting ready for you to show up, because the service is going to be at 5, or at 1045 next Sunday, 520 Castle Road. Put it in your phone. That's the address, so you can know how to get there. Um, but we're going to gather for a worship service at 1045, and then we're going to have a church picnic right after for those of you who join us live stream, it will be live streamed, uh, but again, it'll be at 1045 and not at 9 o'clock. So bring a, a lawn chair, bring a blanket, something like that to sit on. I think we're going to have good weather. The 10-day forecast looks good for next Sunday, so hopefully we'll be okay. It looks like mid-60s and sunny, but you know, that's a week away. If it is raining, pay attention. We'll send you, uh, for everybody who's signed up for the app, and we have your contact info. We'll, we'll text you. We'll let you know. We'll also put it uh, on the website if we are going to be meeting here at 1045 because of, because of the rain. Now, the picnic afterwards, uh, you should sign up to bring something. Uh, again, you can use the app to do that. Um, there's, all, uh, there's a chili cook-off. I think there's only five people signed up, so there's slots for five more of you. If you've been thinking about doing it, sign up um, for, to compete in that. And then lastly, uh, for those of you who are interested in getting connected and knowing more about the church, we have an About Hope class that's coming starting the 24th of October at 9 o'clock. Um, just come and find out about the church. And for those of you who are interested in maybe getting connected in a small group, Valerie and I are opening our home on Wednesday evening, October 20th. Everybody's invited. You're all invited. Come on over. We'll have one big party. Um, we'll serve you some ice cream and some apple crisp, and uh, we'll give you the opportunity to meet some other people. We'll talk about how you can get connected in groups. There'll be group leaders present who are looking to start groups, so um, we'd love to have you. It'd be a great time. All right, Philip Darko is our guest. Philip, come on up. Philip has been here in the country for about four weeks now. I think this is your fourth Sunday. Um, Philip is from Ghana. He's our ministry, one of our ministry partners, um, giving leadership to the Arm of Hope ministry. We love it. Every time Philip is in the country, for those of you who were here at the Armour Hope Banquet, you heard some of, uh, uh, of an update. But Philip, I've asked him to share with the rest of us who weren't there some things about the ministry. So, Philip, we're glad you're with us. Yeah, give me a hand. attendance was massive so I want to thank all of you for your support this year was an extraordinary one because we were thanking God for his faithfulness for the past 10 years it's been such an uns uh, awesome time that uh, we see God work bringing hope and future to many lives in the slums of Accra Ghana it's, it's so amazing that God could connect people to bring such a change, a huge change into the lives of people's uh, life. Let me say it that way. So, it's, it's mind-blowing to just try to get the actual picture about all what is happening. Sometimes I feel I'm still in, in, a, dream, in, in a dream land. Because you wouldn't understand how a young boy from a poverty home, poor background, who, who was actually 
not able to read and write at grade three, his uncle brought him to the city. And then he went back to grade two because he couldn't read and write. So he has to be there. He was the oldest in his class. And begin to read and write. Get to know the truth in God's word. And then get scholarship to come and study in the United States. And then through God's own connections, decided to go on a mission trip to Alaska to meet the Zimmerman. And then they came back to Ghana. They followed up with the ministry to see what God is doing in the slums. I could still remember when she was asking me, Philip, how can we help? When the sister Cheryl was asking, how can we help? I said, oh, I'm praying that we can just support 20 people. Just 20 people. To me, I was thinking 20 people was something so huge. He came back, shared a vision with the church, and that year, you generously gave to support 77 children that year. It followed 142, 206, and then we entered to the 300s, and as we speak now, we have 472 kids that are being blessed. I thought you were giving to the Lord. <laughs> 34 college students, we have, God has blessed us, we, we have already purchased a land for a clinic, which somebody just saw it and paid for it outright. We have 14.6 acre land that we want to have a future campsite. Isn't that amazing what God can do? So we want to thank you so much, church. We want to thank you so much. We want to thank the leadership for catching on the vision. And we are praying that God himself, in the coming years, the next 10 years, we want to see God establish this ministry in, a, in another way. We want to see the hospital being there we have some of the students who are already going to be done with their nursing program. We have one doing physician assistant who's going to man the clinic. We want to see our kids minister in this community so that the other kids will see them and say, yes, we can also do it. If, if a boy like me from a poverty background could now stand here and at least rubble some English, <laughs> I think they can also do it, right? Yeah. yeah, so we want to thank you so much and we are trusting the Lord that as we continue to partner together to impart lives, we know there's a reward not for us only here, but we have a better place to go. Thank you so much, church, and thank you for this opportunity. For some time now, uh, we've been going through the series, When Being One is Difficult. And uh, I'm glad to be here and I was right from the airport about three weeks ago. We decided to pass here and, and listen to uh, Pastor Keck speak. Try to follow some on uh, YouTube as well. And it's amazing how God is using the teachings to bless his church. This morning, we, we want to talk a little bit about, I know a lot have been said within this past weeks, but we want to just touch a little bit on what... Uh, God has laid on a heart concerning when being one is difficult. So today we want to talk about we are better together. Don't you think so? It's always good to be, get, to, 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 to be one. Uh, I took this picture because whilst I was preparing my sermon, one of our, our staff, who used to be one of our boys who finished high school and is now working with us, who sent me this wonderful picture. And this which I was taken on the roof of our building. We have an office complex right in the middle of Slam, which has an ICT center and a library and an office as well. So he took this on the rooftop and he told me, oh, sir, your girls say they miss you. I was right in the middle of preparing my, my sermon, so I said, wow. Isn't this God's timely timing? And I just look at the picture and you could see we are better together. So I decided to use that. We are better together. You see how they line up over there. And then the two down there, you see how they hold their hands together. So I just saw that picture. I said, wow, this is timely. So I decided to use it. Yeah, so we are better together. 
We want to zoom into our text, and we want to read Ephesians chapter 2, 14 and 16. With new translation, living translation. For Christ himself brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people. When in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. 16, together. So we see that together, as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross. And our hostility towards each other was put to death. Was put to death. We're going to go into this verse later. Acts chapter 2, verses 42, 46 to 47. They spent time learning the apostles' teaching. Sharing, breaking bread, and praying together. Praying together. The believers met together in the temple every day. They ate together in their homes, happy to share their food with joyful hearts. And because of what they did, every day, the Lord added those who were saved to the group of believers. This is the word of the Lord. This morning, we are talking about we are better together. I just want to give a little background as to why it's important that we are better together. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. So, so rejoice, you heavens, all who live there. But it will be terrible for the earth. It will be terrible for the earth and the sea. Because the devil has come down to you. He is filled with anger. Because he knows that he does not have much time. He does not have much time. He does not have much time. In fact, when I was going through the scriptures, I was, I was trying to find out why should the heaven rejoice? And why should it be terrible for the earth? And I was trying to contemplate and go through the scriptures. To know why the, the devil is very angry and is telling the earth that it's going to be a terrible thing for the earth. I got a clearer picture from Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. It's not in the slides yet. But I got a clearer picture from that. Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. And it was talking about how thou Satan has fallen from heaven. Lucifer had fallen from heaven. And he was trying to tell me from the scriptures through the prophet Isaiah how he wanted to take over the throne and be above God. So you could see, if you are talking about we are better together, what I'm trying to say is that the earth is in a terrible situation because the devil is angry. He, he, he's the source of Confucianist. He's a Confucianist. He always wants to bring confusion to wherever he finds himself. And that is what he was trying to exhibit over there. And because of that, he could not. He could not fit over there. So when you read Revelation chapter 12, when it comes from the 7, the Bible talks about a great war that took place in heaven. Where 
Angel Michael, it's all in the word of God. It's there. It's right there. Angel Michael and the host of angels need to fight the devil. Because he is a Confucianist. He didn't want peace to reign in heaven. He wanted to take over. He wanted to be in the position above God. And because of that, he was thrown to the earth. So it was a terrible thing for the earth. He, he was very angry about that. When you read John chapter 10, verse 10, it said, The thief comes. The thief, he is Satan. The devil comes not to steal, but to kill and destroy. That is his goal. That is his goal to steal, kill, and destroy. When we read Matthew chapter 10, 24, 10 to 13, it talks about in the last days. His time is short. So he's filled with much anger. And because his time is short, we don't know, but what it's trying to tell us that in those days that his time is going to be short, there are so many things that are going to happen. Many will turn away from their faith. Many will betray and he hates each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. There will be increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold. But the end is not yet. But there's something in verse 13 which is very, very phenomenal here that I want us to look at. But it says that, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. The one who stands firm. The one who stands firm. You see, one thing that I've realized is that you can stand. But when you are together, it becomes more better. There, there is a local parlance in our, in our language which says that when a tree decides to stand alone, when it's a rainstorm, it hits it and it dies alone. But when it's a model of trees standing together and the winds come, it just pass through them. They just burn, but they stand again. It's good. We can, we, can, we, 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 we can stand alone. But the point is that we are better together. We are better together. So what am I trying to drive here? What I'm trying to say is that that is what the devil doesn't want. And that is what he is trying to do. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, time that we find ourselves now is not a good time. It's not a good time at all. So Apostle Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, when you read from the verses 1, he said, know this, that in the last days there will be perilous times. Perilous times means that there will be times that are very hard, risky, Dangerous, we hear of, 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 of diseases. Now we have COVID-19 virus all over the place. It is a sign of the perilous times. Rumors of war, things are going on here and there. But it is a perilous time. It is a hard time. And in this time, it's like everybody wants to think about himself. But we are better together. So all these things you see from the background that the devil has a way of infiltrating to, to dispel us, to bring confusion amongst us. But we thank God from the first reading that we had read in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4, 16. For Christ himself brought peace unto us. And so we read Isaiah 9, 6. I said, unto us a child is born Unto us a son is given. And then when he come down, he says, He shall be the prince of peace. He shall bring, he's, he's the prince of peace. He will, he, he will unite the Jews and the Gentiles into one people. And then on his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility. So when we talk about hostility, we, we are talking about 
enmity. We are talking about antagonism. We are talking about animosity. We are talking about rancor. We are talking about unfriendliness. This, this is things that separate us. These are the things that don't bring us together. But our reading is telling us that Christ on the cross broke down this hostility. He broke down this animosity. He broke down this enmity. So whether a Jew or a Gentile, he put it on a cross and he broke it. We know that the Jews didn't like the Gentiles because they thought the Gentiles were unclean. They felt they, 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 their lifestyle, they are not the promised people. They felt, they, the Jews felt they were so special than, than them and, 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 and they were better than them. But it's interesting that on the cross, on the cross, when Jesus gave up, from Matthew chapter 27, when you read verses 50 and 51, he said, when he cried out, when he cried on the cross, and he gave up his spirit, the Bible says that the curtains in the temple that divided the temple into Divided the temple and segregated the temple. So, like today, I, I'm, I'm not worthy to even stand here. Is, is, the, is, is the high priest, I'm sorry, the high priest, <laughs> he's the one who's supposed to come here and speak because I'm not worthy to come here. And if, with that, even before the high priest will go to the Holy of Holies, they must put a rope on his leg and some with dangles so that when we don't hear him doing the dangling again with the bells and other things, we know probably... He didn't survive in the presence of God. But when Christ cried up on the cross, that curtain was broken. So now we don't have the segregation where we have even women at the back. Women were far, far away behind over there. But when the curtains was torn apart, now we can be together. We can be together. Now we can all go before the throne of God without any restrictions. So from the reading that we had initially, we saw God, the first Bible reading talks about God doing his part of, of the bed. That he, through the cross, put us together to be, become one people. He did that for us. Those of us who never counted, those of us who were far off, he brought us together. So there's no segregation. We are one people. So we see that he did his part. But when we read the Acts chapter 2, verse 42, coming down, then we have a duty to play. That is where we continue to hold on to the peace, the unity, the togetherness that God brought us together. Isn't that amazing? It is. So amazing. So this morning, we want to look at how better are we when we are together? And why are we better together? It is important to know that God himself demonstrated it. God in togetherness. When we read Genesis chapter 1, there's something interesting that we want to look at. And I like, I like the way Pastor Keck was explaining the Trinity to us the other day. And I, I got some rammer from it. And I want us to look at it. So God himself demonstrated that togetherness, even in creation, in the beginning of creation. We saw God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit at work. We saw that. So when we read Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning God created heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God. So it means that in the beginning, he was there. God himself was, th was there. Now, when you come to the verse 2, it says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God. So we see God, number one, there. Secondly, we see the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. 
was hovering over the faces of the water. So we see God at play. We see the Holy Spirit at play. Now look at something at verse 3. And God said, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said, meaning that God spoke. God spoke something. And you see, the mystery that I got from here is that God spoke, God spoke something. God spoke word. Word. Let there be light. Take care, take note of the word light. And there was light. So as, as I was reading and contemplating and, and zooming in, into, into understanding what it actually entails over there, you could see that and God spoke and God said the word over there they didn't mention the name of Jesus. But the word there, and God said, tells me there was another person over there. And that's Jesus Christ. It's a splendid brother in John chapter 1. So let's go to John chapter 1 and see what is there. John chapter 1. Say something that we want to look so that we can, we can, we can get it. Very well. So John chapter 1, right there, says that. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. And Genesis chapter 1 through, so God, God said. The first verse, the second verse, we didn't hear God say something. But in verse 3, in Genesis chapter 1, we had, and God said, let there be light. Now let's listen to here. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now let's listen. In him was life, and the life is the light. So God spoke. Let there be light. Let there be light. And he's saying that in him was life. And the life was the light of man. Huh. It is that amazing. Let's jump to the verse. <laughs> the verse 14 or so. The verse 14 says, And the word became flesh, and the word became flesh, and dwelt amongst us. And we have seen his glory as of the only son from the father, the only son from the father, full of grace, and truth. And who is the only son of the Father? That's Jesus Christ. So we are seeing God. All what I'm trying to say is that we are seeing God togetherness. Even in creation, he, He's telling us that we are together. And as Pastor Keck was explaining the last time, I was like, oh, that's Pastor Keck, right over. His name is Pastor Dr. Keck Belmont. Now, I was just picturing this. He's a father. He's a professor. And he's the pastor of this church. We see this person as Pastor Kirk. But he's, he is a father. He is a professor who teaches at a school or at a university. And he is a pastor of this church. We see this person, the same person, Exhibiting himself in these three roles. So how does it become difficult for us to understand that God himself can, 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 can demonstrate himself in these three ways? And then like, oh, who is, why do you say God the Father, God the Son, the God, God the Holy Spirit? If, even if human beings, we, we are not omnipresent, but at least we can, we can tackle and hold on to three things and do it at the same time. Why our Father in heaven cannot do it? So we see God, even in creation, Showing, exhibit himself in this. 
So it means that God is one. He has always existed togetherness. And it was in togetherness that made this wonderful, amazing, beautiful world that we are seeing. He existed. He always existed in togetherness. We saw God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit at work. They displayed. Two, we experience God's presence. We experience God's presence. We experience God's presence through the Spirit. Matthew chapter 18 verse 20 says that, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with, with them. First Corinthians 6, 9, he said, do, do, do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not of your own. Because God is omnipresent, we are always in his presence as individuals. We are always in his presence. And he's in us. He's in us. So, as 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, his spirit in his ass, in his ass, it means that God has a home within us where he dwells. He has made us his home. And the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in us. So, when we are together, we experience God's presence. But, of course, there are some words here. It says, where two or three, even though he resides in us, even though he's with us, he said that when two or three are guarded, are guarded not in any name, but in the name, in his name, he is with us. It means that it's good to, to, be, to, 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 to experience God individually, but also when two or three have, that is togetherness, Togetherness. When two or three have gathered in his name, it becomes extraordinary. It becomes fabulous. Our temples are the body of Christ. So he has taken residence of that. Of that. He dwells with us. He's with us. So when, when we read Acts chapter 2, he was talking about how they were together. It's good. We see God Individually, he sees us. He dwells in us. But when two or three are guarded in his name, it's fabulous. So, that's how we experience God as well. We experience God's presence when we are together. We experience God when we are together through the scriptures. Hebrews 4, 12, 4, 12 says that, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, Piercing to the division of the soul and spirit and joints and marrow and descending to the thoughts and intentions of hearts. So this reminds us that the word of God is alive. It's alive. We, are, we, are, we encounter the living God when we are together as we share the scriptures, as we listen to his word. It speaks to us because it's, it's active. It speaks to us. He may even try to convince us of our sins. Convince us of our sins. He moves us to repentance. He strengthens us and encourages us. And it drives us to be on our knees and worship. We are better together. True prayer. It's a call on to me. And I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. You do not know. God God wants us to request from him. God wants us to talk to him when we come together. When we are together, it becomes better. God wants to open our our house before him. There was a wonderful worship today. As we see our young men and women play and sing. That's what togetherness togetherness could bring. He empowers us to overcome sin. We're able to admonish ourselves. We're able to encourage ourselves. And it helps us to take action for the Lord. 
Thirdly, we grow in love and support one another. Love is the greatest quality of human life. Romans 2 often, be devoted to one another, another, another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. So what are we trying to say here? Be devoted in love means that we are able to show love in all times, in all situations. It means that we are devoting to life. When we are together, it helps us to be more devoted in love. We don't think ourselves highly than others, but we try to love in all circumstances. It helps us to honor up others above ourselves. What does it mean? God himself demonstrated that. He didn't need to look at his son, Jesus Christ, but he gave it him out so that we will be saved. He gave his son as a savior. God was not concerned first and foremost about his son, Jesus Christ. He said God's love was and is, always has been the first and foremost. We are better together. Love is supreme quality and the most excellent way for us to live. Colossians 3.13 says, bear with each other and forgive and forgive whatever grievances you may have against each other. Forgive as the Lord forgives us. If you want to be together, if you want to be better together, we must be able to forgive each other. We must be able to forgive each other. And as we said, as we read Revelation chapter 12, the devil is angry. He wants to destroy us. It's terrible. He wants to bring confusion amongst us. There are so many things that are going on in the world that can break separation, that can bring confusion amongst believers. We are better together. I think the last time I was here, I was saying that I always pray that if I have issue with my wife, and this time she's here, so I can say it again, that if I have an issue with my wife, I, I should be able to make sure that it's being resolved before we sleep. Because if we sleep and Christ comes, probably I'm going to be called before him in his presence that I have something against my wife. I'm angry with my wife, and I took her to sleep. What happens if I sleep and never woke up? So that's how I'm going to count before God. So we must be able to give, forgive each other. We must be able to forgive. If you, we are better together, we must be able to, 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 to forgive. And when we do that, it will strengthen us and we'll be united. Love is one of the ingredients that could revolutionize the society. John 17, 21. That they will all may be one, just as your father are in me and I in you, so that also may be one in us, so that the world, so that the world, so that the world may believe, may believe, that is without any doubt, that you sent me, that the world may believe. This was Jesus' prayer to the believers. And he was telling them that as they continue, as he's living, they will continue to be in unity, complete unity, that the world will know. So when you read Matthew chapter 5, 13 and 14, it talks about we are the salt of the earth. Togetherness will let the world know. The 14 says that we are the light of this world. So when we are better together, the world sees us. The world sees the church. The world sees us as individuals, as people who are making influence. They see our lives and they praise our Father in heaven. I want to end with the last one, which says that we become united in strength. We become united in strength. There is unity in strength. We have, a, we have something we call broom in Ghana. And the broom is used to sweep rooms. But the broom teaches us a lot of things. When you pick one of the brooms, 
can you break? It will easily break. But when you put all the brooms together, you try to break it, it will never be possible. Because they are united, they are together. When we are together, we are so strong. We fight evil and the wickedness of the world. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says that, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. The enemy is against which are called, those who are called. And you see that this wrestle that we're talking about can never be fought in the natural plane. It's not a natural fight. No. Or in the sp sp uh, physical sphere. No, that is not it. We are engaging in a spiritual sphere, warfare. And we thank God that the devil was defeated. And as we come together, he will be defeated, defeated because in prayer, in oneness, in togetherness, we can be able to defeat all the principalities and powers. He has given us authority. He says whatever we bind on earth is bind in heaven. Whatever we lose on earth is lose in heaven. So when we are together, we are able to fight. It's amazing that Jesus gave us victory in Calvary on the cross. He triumphed over Satan through his death, burial, and resurrection. And only through him, we can successfully wrestle against the evil forces in our lives today. It's better we are together. It's better we are together. Last of all, when we are together, we promote God's agenda. Psalm 109, when you read from the 1 to 5, it says, My God, whom I praise, do not remain silent. For people who are wicked and deceitful have opened their mouth against me. So David was praying for God. Or was praying to God. Telling God, this is what we are going to do. The Christian dome is on a serious attack. There are so many things that are going on. Which is attacking the Christian dome. There's something going on right in Ghana which is, is very critical. Attacking the church. But when we are together, we will not be distracted by some of these things. We will be focused. So, this was a prayer that David was committing vengeance unto God with greater revelation and grace and faith that came by Jesus Christ. We understand that we pray for good for our enemies. We want to pray for good for our enemies and not for their room. Yet we, are remind, we want to remind ourselves that David re refused to act upon those curses. He left vengeance to God. I was reading something, it's like, oh, that's, that's, that's huge. That the world is spending between $300 million to $50 trillion to fight climate change in the next two decades. And we see it, it's very cool. That's a lot of money that could be used to do a lot of stuff. But that is cool. But you see, there is also an agenda which otherwise to me seems that is more dangerous than climate change. The, the reason is that climate change 
my help, my, 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 my probably make water levels to, to rise. And when water levels are, are, are risen, it can just run on everyone on this earth and every, everyone will be lost. Or probably, well, uh, there are no more rains coming there. On the other side, it can bring poverty because people will not have food to eat and other things. And, and we see nothing wrong with that. We want to support it. But there's also another agenda which, which also goes a long way to deplete human race and procreation. But it seems we are cool with that. There's another agenda that thinks that human existence should never go on. There's an agenda which thinks can stop human race. But we see that cool. We must continue to pray and promote God's agenda when we are together. This morning, I just want to encourage all of us that we are better together. We are better when we are united. It's more difficult to be one, but when God is on our side, we'll be able to scale to. Let us come together as believers. Let's come together as husbands and wives. Let's come together as children, fathers, and mothers. And when we are together, God will do great and mighty things in our lives. Shall we pray? And so, Lord, we want to thank you for your word this morning. We want to bless your name for who you are. You demonstrated to us what unity is all about, what togetherness is all about. You took us through your word to let us know the benefits when we are together. We are praying for each and every one here, including myself, O oh Lord. Not a God who strive for unity, who strive for togetherness. A God togetherness with will experience your presence. Togetherness will heal our nations. Togetherness will possess the nations for you. We thank you for such opportunity in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Would you please stand and worship with us?
You know, Philip, um, we are better. We, here in America, with you in Ghana, are better together. We really are. We are blessed to be a ministry partner of yours. And I know that you feel blessed to be a ministry partner of ours. We're better together. We're growing. God is working in Ghana, changing hundreds of young people's lives because we're in it together. I can't think of somebody better than you to be in it together with. Your passion for God's word, it gives us confidence to know that while you're thousands of miles away, you, representing us, representing God, do with the love and passion of his word, guided by his word, being rooted in his word. But that's because of Jesus and your love for Jesus. Take our love back to the children. Let them know we'll be there pretty soon. A couple more months. A couple more months. Uh, we love you. May God bless you and Hannah as you travel back. Be safe. Hope Community Church, we'll see you guys next Sunday out at Castle Farm, 1045. Have a great week.